Hi, I'm Rocco Stano and welcome to Storymakers. Today we have Dan Goodman with us, the author of Houdini and Me. Hey Rocco. Uh, 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 you look a little tied up there. I'm fine, really. You sure? No, no, I, you know. I'm perfectly th comfortable. You will be more comfortable out of that thing. <sighs> All right, if you insist. Let me get out of this thing. You're a regular Houdini. That's right. Isn't it better? Yes. Yeah, I think so. It, yes. Now I feel better. Tell us about the book. A lot of my book ideas have come out of that question, what if? What if a kid lived in Harry Houdini's house on 113th Street in Manhattan? And what if that kid figured out a way to communicate with the spirit of Houdini by text message? And what if, what if, the kid and Houdini were to pull off Houdini's famous trick, Metamorphosis, where they would switch places and Houdini would come to the 21st century and the kid would go back to the 1920s and find himself hanging upside down from a, a skyscraper and it, while he's in a straitjacket. So how did you research Houdini? With all my books, I just, I try and find out everything I could find out about that particular person that I'm writing about. So with Houdini, I went on YouTube, searched for Houdini. There's millions of videos about Harry Houdini. I read every adult biography written about the guy and there's dozens of them. And I also went to the Houdini Museum, which used to be in New York City. You mentioned that the Houdini house is on 113th Street in New York City? I live near 104th Street and I was walking down the street one day and I saw this plaque on the wall at 113th Street that said that Harry Houdini spent the last 22 years of his life there. And I thought, you know, I like to write historical fiction, and sometimes I like to blend fact and fiction together, and I thought, maybe I could do something on, on Houdini. I went and, and I took a picture of the plaque, and as soon as I took the picture, the light flipped on, and some guy came out and started screaming at me. He said, this is private property, and don't ever come back here again. And I, I felt terrible, you know, so I, I slunk away, you know. But my wife suggested to me, she said, you know, when the book comes out, why don't you give that guy a copy of your book? So I did. The day the book came out, I went over there and I put it in a plastic bag so I wouldn't have to like talk to anybody. I just put it on his doorknob, you know? And I put it on his doorknob and I ran away. And literally a half an hour later, the guy calls me up on the phone. He says, I love the book. I'm so excited about the book. I'm so sorry that I yelled at you. Why don't you and your wife come over sometime and I'll give you a tour of the house. And he did, and it was wonderful. So now he's my friend. Did you get like a feeling of Houdini being in the house when you were there? Well, it's interesting because a lot of the, the woodwork and the fixtures that were there in Houdini's time in the 1920s are still there. They've been preserved. So there's a real feeling of like down in the basement where Houdini used to practice his escapes and like the bedrooms. One of these bedrooms was where Houdini slept, you know, and his library was up on the top floor. So yeah, there was, I mean, I didn't sense his presence or anything, but it was kind of just cool being in the same place where this very famous per person lived. And I hear that your book has been selected to represent New York State as a New York State great read. Every year, the Library of Congress creates a list of 53 books, one from each state, and, and there's a few um, places like Puerto Rico, et cetera, that are on the list. Yeah. And, and so this is the one that's going to be from uh, New York. And our viewers, if you want to find out what book is from your state, you can go to the link in the post and check it out. You mention in the book many places in New York City. What were some of the places you mentioned? Well, besides Houdini's house, uh, you know, on 113th Street, right nearby is the Church of St. John the Divine. Right. And there's these peacocks that live in the church parking lot, which I incorporated into the story. Uh, also, a Riverside Park, a big scene takes place there with the trains going underneath, and Madison Square Garden, uh, a few other locations in the city. So there was a plaque on Houdini's house. Right. And, you know, I, when I walk around, not only, you know, in New York, but anywhere I visit, I always see uh, plaques. And as a matter of fact, there's things called literary landmarks where they put up 
plaques on places that have something to do with uh, books. So your hobby has something to do with plaques, doesn't it? Yes, I'm, I'm obsessed with places where really famous people lived or really famous events took place. And uh, on the wall of my office, I have a giant map of Manhattan and I have pins stuck in where all these famous people lived, including Houdini. Of all the people on, the, on that wall, you know, there's hundreds of celebrities who've lived in Manhattan. The only one who really inspired me to write a book was this guy. That's a great hobby, you know? You should walk around your neighborhood, your town, and see if you could locate a plaque on a building. And if you can, tell us about it in the comments section. And sometimes, Rocco, kids can find out about an historical event that took place in their town and actually lobby their mayor to put up a plaque in honor of that event or that person who lived there. Houdini, magic. Yes. Can you do some magic for us? I can only do one trick, Rocco, okay? Because this is the trick that I described in the first chapter of the book. And to do this trick, it's a very simple trick, and you can do it at home, it's really fun. All you need are three things. You need an egg, mm -hmm. you need a little salt, and a smooth level surface. You want to amaze your friends, right? They're sitting around and uh, you hide the salt. You don't let them see the salt, okay? And you say, hey guys, you know, um, I can make an egg stand on its end. And your friends will say, ah, you can't do that. And, and let's go ahead, I'll say, try it, go ahead, try it. And they can't do it. It's virtually impossible right. to do it, okay? Then here's the misdirection rock. You know, in all magic tricks, you use misdirection. You go like, abracadabra, hocus pocus, or whatever. And while you're doing that, you sprinkle just a little bit of salt. There's a pinch of salt on the table, right? And you make a little, uh, like, a, like a tea for a football, you know? And then you take the egg, you form a little base. Voila! You blow, blow the excess salt away, and the egg stands up by itself. Presto! Amazing! Practically Houdini. Practically. Yes. Try it at home. It's really fun and uh, you'll do it better than I will, I'm sure. Dan, it was so much fun having you here and learning about Houdini. Oh, thanks for having me, Rocco. Yeah, where are you off to? I am off to December 17th, 1903 to watch the Wright brothers fly the first airplane. Oh. Because I'm fascinated by the Wright brothers. And I think I'll just hop over to Houdini's house. Okay, great. I'll see you later. Yes. One, One, two, two three. three. And until next time, read a book in any format. <laughs>